this is. And if anybody wants to leave and just go mountain biking, I won't, I won't hold it against you at all. So thanks for coming out. And uh, so I wanted to um, just do a couple introductions, as Angela uh, had mentioned. I'm at Boston College. I'm an uh, instructional designer there, but I'm also uh, managing this uh, Mediacron project. And Brad Maring is, is with me today. He's the lead developer, lives in Boulder, Colorado, not too far from here. And um, so he's going to be around afterwards if people have particularly technical questions. He's the guy who does the heavy lifting with the development on the project. So thanks for being here, Brad. Um, and you, you can stay. <laughs> Brad is one of those unappreciated web developers who does a lot of the work and is in the behind the scenes. So I'm glad he's here. And uh, so there's been a lot of there's a lot of pressure at this conference to talk about heroes. And I'm going to be honest. I haven't really gotten into the spirit of it. I haven't worn any capes. I haven't really thought about it, frankly, a whole lot. But um, it occurred to me today that I do actually have a costume with me, and I'm wearing it right now. Anybody guess who I's, I'm dressed up as? Did you? No, no. A suit. <laughs> no. To me, is kind of a yeah. Uh, think Clark Kent or Bruce Wayne. I'm probably not dressed well enough to be Bruce Wayne, but maybe Clark Kent. But the reason I thought about it is because uh, in my job, um, often faculty have this problem of thinking that we have magical powers, that somehow I come in and I fix things and I don't understand how I did it. And often it's nice to, to feel, it makes us feel powerful. But in fact, I think it does them a disservice. And it's better if I don't dress up as a superhero and come across as that, the person who's going to come along and solve everything because it, it's actually not that magical. And my job should be to show them, sort of help them look behind the curtain to mix, mix metaphors, I guess, a little bit. But, but I think that it, it made me think about, uh, in my role, that it's important for them to be thinking of themselves as, as the heroes and me to try to stay in the background. But my, my job is really uh, you know, to help faculty find tools for thinking. Oh, and by the way, if I did, if I did dress up, this is what I would look like as, as Mediacron, Mediacron man. But that's beside the point. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is, is Mediacron. This is a tool that we uh, think of as a toolkit for digital collection and storytelling. That's our latest uh, sort of uh, term for this thing that does a lot of different things. It's a little bit hard to categorize. And we want to talk about uh, an LTI integration that we developed and how we've sort of how, how it's helped us think about Canvas in some different ways and how, it, how it's helped us think about Mediacron in some different ways. And I think you've probably seen a lot of different kinds of integrations today. And it's useful, I think, for, for us to just sort of think about all the different varieties of things we can do with Canvas uh, as, as a tool that allows for, you know, that plays well with others. So, but just give me, let me give you a little bit of background where we're coming from. You know, I'm at Boston College, which is a you know, kind of medium-sized university, residential, not a lot of purely online um, courses, big emphasis on the liberal arts and, and that kind of thing. And um, we're in the process of, we just sort of cut the cord with Blackboard Vista. We've been with Blackboard Vista for seven, eight years, which is a very long time, especially when the software doesn't change for seven or eight years. So we're excited to be with software that changes in positive ways. Um, and so with Mediacron, we're also excited to be in a long-term relationship with a piece of software. This is a positive relationship, we feel, and a healthy one, because it's been something that we've been, we've been uh, building since 2007, really. And it's been allowing us to kind of think about software, think about how people teach, and how, how, what their relationship is with the tools that they use. Um, and it comes out of a digital humanities teaching background. And it really came out of a couple of projects way back 2005, where we got some grants, did some one-off projects. Um, and they both were very interesting. And, uh, but they're expensive. You know, projects like these are kind of boutique one-off projects are hard to fund because they, they take grants usually to, to, to hire a developer. Uh, and then once you've done it, it's hard to duplicate them. So, we started thinking about how could we develop a tool that would um, allow us to, uh, to, to kind of make the stuff that we developed available to other people. So we kind of uh, adopted some design principles at that point. We wanted to develop a tool 
that was growing from the practice of the humanities on campus, we wanted to make it easy because faculty typically aren't going to have a lot of time or energy to build something themselves and learn those kind of skills, but they'll use it if it's easy to use. And then make that success re replicable. We, if we figure out something that works, immediately allow to, other people to do it as quickly as possible and then just keep iterating that process. So feed it back into a common tool uh, that everybody can use. And so first version looked kind of like this, based in Flash and had a way to uh, group things into slideshows by topic and then put things on maps in a timeline and, uh, and tags and so forth. So any item could float through all these different sets of relationships. Second version, got an upgrade, moved into uh, JavaScript rather out of Flash and it had enhanced uh, capabilities for mapping and the timeline, for visualizing things, putting things on maps and having different kinds of maps. So that was a significant step up. That was a couple of years ago that we did that. But now, and as we've gone along, we've continued to see how people used it and refine, sort of keep thinking about, all right, if we're gonna keep this thing around, what, what is it actually doing? What, what's different about this tool or important about this tool for us uh, that may be different from what the LMS does, in this case, Canvas now? And we really are thinking about what does it mean to teach and to learn in a digital age because we need new skills. It's just all of us are making this stuff up at the same time, faculty and students alike. And it's really become kind of a core competency to think about how do you collect digital content and then tell stories with that content. We've got more, more stuff, more digital stuff than we know what to do with. The problem isn't scarcity of information anymore. It's how do we make sense of it? How do we curate it? How do we, how do we uh, sift through all the stuff that's out there? And, and then figure out how to make meaning with that content in new ways that none of us were really trained to do. So we need some new tools, and we've been trying to think about it as a toolkit, toolkit for thinking with di digital content. And um, in my mind, it really involves collaborating and creating stuff. We've got to be making stuff and building things if we're really going to learn how to think with this stuff, because it's not self-evident, and I think if people don't have ways to do that, it's very difficult for people to figure out what it means to think with digital content. And you know, this, uh, in our experience, has been the ability to curate digital content and then make meaning around it, tell a story, make an argument with it. Um, and that's been something that faculty have been learning as they use Mediacron and then students increasingly as they start using Mediacron as a, as a way to, to um, do projects and submit homework. So, and this is gonna involve uh, a variety of media, obviously text, image, audio, video, and then putting those things in different relationships. And this is where, you know, it's different, difficult for the average LMS to do this kind of thing where you, what if you want to have a map and a timeline and then a couple different ways of visualizing something in a sequence. So that's where the notion of sort of different kinds of collections is core to Mediacron. And then being able to talk about it, talk around it, comment on it, as, as a way to um, connect those items in meaningful ways as, as you're also putting them in different relationships. So Mediacron is really designed to be as flexible as possible in terms of how you relate things because people often don't know what they think about stuff until they go in and start building a project and they need to be able to adjust and pivot, do different things with it. And increasingly, faculty really want their students to go in and do their projects together in Mediacron and that's been a growing set of features are the collaborative kind of tools. And then finally, it just needs to be easy for people to get in and get started. We really are committed to helping faculty. We've got early adopters, we've got people who are always doing, pushing the envelope, but a lot of us just need an entry point where we can get in and start playing around with a map. What does it mean to put things on a timeline and all this sort of basic digital humanities kind of work and getting people in and then if they need to go to some other tool, they can do that later, but get started with a low barrier to entry. So here's some features just to give you a sense of what, what it does. And it really is centered around uh, collections and items that get put into collections. So it's basic tech, text, image, audio, video. So a basic image would look like this. You could expand a sidebar that has metadata and description that could be alongside it if you want it to be there. Texts are basically, you can either put in your own text or you could put in a manuscript text. And this example has a transcript in the sidebar. Uh, and then video and audio, pretty, pretty straightforward really. But then the collections are kind of core of what Mediacron does. So 
you can have a variety of different relationships that I think are kind of core ways of thinking in, in the humanities and other, really extends to a lot of other disciplines and approaches as well. So you have a map, you have a timeline that, that puts the date, is basically date-based. You have, this is an example of a slideshow where you move through slides different, in all different kinds of content. In this, in this version of Mediacron, we can now put other collections inside a collection. So you can have nested collections. Each of them essentially gets treated as an item. So you can have many different kinds of relationships and any, any given item can be in multiple different contexts. So you, it really gives you a lot of power to sort of uh, explore different relationships from different angles. Now this is a variation on the slideshow. This is a, a basically everything on one page. So in this case, you're, you're gonna be scrolling down the page and it's a little bit like if, if you've read Medium or something like that, one of those uh, tools. And then you can embed images and maps and other items in there. So that's kind of a variation that's all on one page, we call that a narrative. This is just a basic folder, you're just collecting other stuff and creating sort of sub, uh, sub levels for your site. This is a comparison where you put two items next to each other. This is pretty important for especially like art history, other places where these could be independent items that show up in other places, but it's really important to look at them side by side, or you might have four items where they all need to be in one place. So that's, it's a very simple kind of interface but it's really helpful for certain kind of disciplines where you wanna have a separate interface where you can talk about what does it mean to have these things next to each other. This is an example of a, a variation on the slideshow as well or on the comparison where you can have images that are on top of each other and evolve from one to the next. So this, in this case, we have a sketch that evolves into the final uh, painting playing, oh good. Yeah, so that's the idea. And in this case, you know, it was important to be able to look at them together on top of each other. So, and so we've had a geology professor who uses this with different kinds of topo maps and has them, you know, uh, really uh, layered on top of each other. So that's another, and that came out of a faculty member's interest in doing this. This is what something he wanted to do with his students. And then again, we have comments. So this just happens, this happens in the sidebar. Uh, along with it, alongside any item. And then annotation is really comments within the context of an image. So it's a little bit like Flickr or, or Facebook. You can zoom in on an image and see the individual um, comments. You know, and this really helps you keep a relationship between the part and the whole on an image and is, is really important for certain kinds of visual, uh, visual information. And then we're gonna have more options now for making your site look however you want it. And we hope to be able to use it for projects that really need a distinct look and feel so that we don't have to go out and get a grant every time we, we do a, a kind of project that uses the same toolkit that many uh, humanities projects use. So we're hoping that that will help us get a little bit more bang for our buck on some of this stuff. So now, Canvas integration. So why, why integrate Canvas and Mediacron? Um, you know, there's a way in which it basically is just about allowing these tools to play to their strengths, not, not asking them to do things that they shouldn't do. The LMS uh, can't do everything, and we really don't want it to do everything because that's when software becomes bloated and hard to manage. But they're much easier, you know, for the, it's easier for these kinds of tools now to play well together. So if we think about um, Canvas as another kind of context, I think it really does um, lend itself to the basic approach of Mediacron, which is take pieces of content and put them in a variety of different contexts that are meaningful, and that same item can be in a variety of contexts, and, and um, Canvas just happens to be another one that has particular purposes. So, you know, it could be, the, the, the basic scenarios that we, we often see people using it is faculty collecting a bunch of stuff that they wanna have in a particular arrangement uh, with a few different views that they, they give to their students as kind of a second textbook, and they have them go out and look at parts of it before class and talk about it in class, that's kind of the faculty driven. And then there's a student driven version where faculty have students uh, maybe put their final projects into uh, Mediacron. Or we had, a, we had two history core courses who had 500 students fall semester go out to Boston area museums and take a photo. Each of them took a photo of an of a artifact, did some research, put it on a map, put it on a timeline, and suddenly you have this really rich 
collection of stuff from all over the city and all over the world in one place. So those are a couple of basic scenarios. And what it looks like within Canvas is uh, as we start off, um, you know, this is just the basic Canvas site. And that started. what you want to do at, you know, obviously at the beginning is connect your, uh, connect your site. So here we are going to Canvas. We're going to connect to the, the Canvas site that we're working with. And once we do this, when we go back, Canvas knows, uh, it's maybe getting a little cut off on the side there, but down in the corner, now that we've refreshed the page, you'll be able to see that there's a button there that links to the, to the Metacron site that we're dealing with. And this takes us out to the site. And then if we want to go into, um, if we go into the app area, you'll see that there it is in the, you know, in the app series. So that's made the connection with Mediacron. And then if we talk about uh, in the context of modules, it's fairly straightforward in, uh, you basically just go to your uh, module when you create, when you want to add an item, you go in and uh, go to external tool, Mediacron shows up as an option. And once you're, once you're there, what this is pulling up is a way to browse your Mediacron content. So we want to go down and grab this particular slideshow. And once we add that, it now is in the context of that module, so that could be part of a larger collection of stuff. And it shows up in the frame of, uh, in the, frame of the module, and you can navigate through. Um, this is an image where you can zoom in. Zoom on in on the image, you can annotate that image there and there's sidebar content. And then you could go through, um, this happens to be an audio um, item where you might want to look at an image and there's, there's, the sidebar is making the connection between why this image and this music is related. So you're, you see the, the uh, words to the song and other relevant information. And then if we go to the next, this is just another image. Uh, in this case, it's a map. So you can, again, put whatever content you want in there. And, um, and that, so that's an example of this, what it looks like in a module. Now, you can also put this in, a, um, in any rich text area. So you can see, you know, this is one of the powerful things about um, Canvas is that anywhere you have a text area, you can do a lot of really exciting things. And so, for example, you might have, uh, this embedded in, a, in the context of a, a discussion. The assignment might be go look at this slideshow and let's discuss it as a class. So in this case, you just go to the, you know, you go, go there and again, you're going through the same process of browsing your content that's in Mediacron. And well, in this case, we'll, you can either embed it or you can add a link to it if you didn't want to have it uh, in the context of Canvas uh, embedded this way and we'll put in a little bit of text. And then what students are going to do, of course, is just go and reply. They'll be able to view that, and this could be graded. You know, maybe, maybe it is something you're giving them credit for. But this is where, you, you know, you could comment in, in Mediacron, but there's also real value to having it integrated into the grading system of Canvas. And so there we don't really have to make Mediacron do what it might not be uh, designed to do, which it's really not designed to be uh, a learning management system. So you get be the best of both in that way. You get content that's right there, and then they can just start commenting on it and have a discussion around it. And you could imagine that being happening in a few diff different contexts. Now, we can also do um, something like this where we have uh, an assignment where students are going in and they're submitting this, say they were going out to a museum and they had taken a photo, put it into Mediacron, they could embed it as well. Uh, in this case, we'll, we'll go grab a, grab a different item and have it um, embedded right within the submission form. So we'll submit that assignment, and then we'll go look at it as an instructor. And if we do that, you can see that now, you're, now you get the payoff of speed grader. Say you have 100 of these submissions, they're all going to show up within the context of speed grader. You can go in and look at that. Say the student had annotated it and put in some description. This is an example. This is an actual student submission from another project where they went and did a little bit of research and kind of talked about that item. So there, I think speed grader, you get, a, get some real payoff by having it within Canvas if you're grading all those individual items. So 
where are we going from here with this? I mean, we have the basic integration set up. We're going to be working on Mediacron quite a bit in the next um, uh, six months, really, and we'll be, ref we'll be using it a lot this fall, and we'll be interested to see how, how it changes the way faculty think about assignments. How would they, I think in particular, it's going to be useful for, um, you know, some like, like art history professors who now have all their, all their stuff in a, maybe in a one PowerPoint, and it makes it difficult to, to distribute to students afterwards, and they could have it in Mediacron, show it in class, but then also have it available, and also have the ben added benefit of being able to put those things on maps or have other kinds of commentary around it. So there are going to be a lot, there's a lot more development coming now that we have the basic framework <coughs> in place. We also want to share it with other universities. This has been the last grant we got was really about how do we, how do we redo Mediacron, but also share it with other universities. So we're looking at, uh, we have some partners right now. We've had a handful of universities using it the last couple of years, and they're going to continue using it this next year. And we've got sort of the year to figure out a model for sharing it. Uh, we want it to be sustainable so that um, we could do it as open source, but that takes money. It's not, you know, giving something away paradoxically is not free. And so we've been encouraged to try to think about ways to maybe a subscription model, maybe something like this. So we're interested in talking with other universities who might be interested, finding a way to share it and to keep developing in a way that we can keep using it at, media, at Boston College, but also be able to um, share, share it with other universities. So if you have questions afterwards, uh, you know, and want to talk more about, um, you know, p potential partnership, I can give you a little bit more information about that. But I wanted to just open it up for any questions you might have right now about what we've done uh, so far about Mediacron or LTI or whatever. Any questions? Yeah, so there was a, um, there's a step in there where you, um, when you get to the, uh, get to adding a module, what we clicked was the external tool. So that's where, if you've added something as, uh, through an LTI, that's where you get your list of, uh, of stuff. Um, so that's, you kind of have to know, it's a little bit hard, you don't, wouldn't necessarily think external tool, but it's, it's there once you get used to those kinds of integrations. Yeah. Does this still fit into yours personally or the whole department, or like a group kind of thing? You could, yeah. I mean, you could have a group Mediacron site. People do that. Often it's connected to a class because we have it connected to our student information system, much like Canvas, and people will use it with a course, but it, it also is useful for other kinds of digital humanities projects that might be broader than a particular course and, and maybe presenting research or maybe presenting something like that. So it could be, it wouldn't have to be course related. Yeah, but if it's the same course, I mean, that would be Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there are some people who are wanting to create a kind of repository of shared content that you could go in and grab a piece of it, and that certainly would be a great way to, to use it. Uh, great question. I think we're, we're still, yeah, sorry, how, she's asking about how, how does this work on a, uh, a device, a mobile device, touch device, and we're in the process of developing uh, the sort of responsive uh, elements of it, and it will probably just be a sw you know, swipe gestures to go through a, to go through a um, slideshow, for example. But we're, we're, uh, we're working on making it adjust to whatever screen size you're on, and, and a touch screen would certainly be something we want, we want people to be able to use it on. It'll be a little tight on a smartphone, but uh, we'd still like people to be able to use it on whatever screen, uh, screen they're on. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. Where, um, the question was whether the annotations uh, would be aware of the user or maybe restricted to certain kinds of users. And, and it basically, you know, if you're talking about uh, the site in general, you can have different roles. So people could be in just as viewers and they wouldn't be able to annotate anything. You could be in as a contributor, which allows you to edit your content or annotate an image that you created. 
but not somebody else's. And if you're in as an editor, then you could edit anybody's stuff. I don't know. If but more specifically, with SCI integration. So, ah. if Uh, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, you know. Sorry, let me repeat yeah. that question. So the question is really around what's the connection between users in the then the standalone Metacron site and the and the site that's uh, and the Canvas site. What in terms of users? So there's a couple of things there. One is that it is aware of. Make sure you use the of, use the mic there. Sorry. Um, yeah. Is it not on? It's aware of what user is in the Canvas site, and it's also aware of what user roles you have in the actual Mediacron site so that you know we can do multiple levels of restriction. We know that you're coming from Canvas so we can modify it if we need to as it comes across, but it also knows what rights you have within the Mediacron site itself. I think the idea right now is you probably would be doing, you wouldn't be doing a lot of editing within the Canvas environment on, the, on that content, that most of it would be, if you really wanted to work with Mediacron heavily, that you'd go out to the full site and really be kind of working with it there. And so there's more of an emphasis on viewing, and then if you're interacting, it's more through the, through the Canvas mechanism, just because uh, there's much more screen real estate to work with uh, when you're in the full site, and a lot of the views are just better if you have more to work with. So that's kind of the, especially the editing stuff. So, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's an interesting question because the, the LTI, at least the version of the LTI, and we've been talking about apparently there's some new stuff coming out, but the version we're using doesn't necessarily identify the user, but we have session information from both on both platforms, and they're not synchronized session information, but you can't, you know, you've logged into both of them at some point. Um, if you were going to do, to make actual changes through the LTI, there would, ha you know, we have to do a little bit of, authentication on both sides, which is, mm, we'd like to eliminate that step and have it passed in between, and as far as I understand it, the version of the LTI we're using doesn't make that insanely easy, which is, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm hearing things about new versions, and apparently, you know, there's a sem session earlier that they were talking about new ways to synchronize that stuff. It's, it's not, the version we're using it isn't, isn't as friendly as we want it to be yet, but it'll get there. Thanks, everybody. Hope you can get out and enjoy the rest of the nice weather.